Hi and welcome back to Gabor's Crypto. In today's special video, we will have an AMA and Ask Me Anything session with Andrex. Andrex is a company with the mission of making crypto green again. How? Well, you can find it out in today's session. Hosted by Shugo Ventures, you will get a lot of questions from the community members and you will hear the answers from Andrex. Enjoy the show. My name is Gabor. If you have been in Shugo Ventures for a while, then you know me as the community manager. Obviously, we are trying to find exciting projects for investors um, and to try to get in early, even pre-IDO. So we are um, a community, a crowdfunded uh, venture capital company. And uh, we have a lot of exciting projects, but one of our first projects uh, that we, actually I think the very first project that we had uh, signed is with Andrex. And uh, Julius is from Andrex and, and we have another person from Andrex, but Julius will answer the questions today. Uh, can you give us an introduction just very briefly about yourself, what you're doing at Andrex? Um, and, and then we get onto the questions. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So, as you've said already, my name is Julius. I'm one of the two co-founders at NREX, together with Vito Taz. And I take the role of Chief of Operations within the enterprise. Uh, my primary role, as I'm coming from environmental commodities trading background, as I previously, I was working at one of the biggest global environmental trading houses back in Benelux region. And I was working with environmental instruments such as biofuels, energy efficiency, uh, biomethane, green hydrogen, carbon allowances, carbon credits, renewable energy certificates, guarantees of origin. I mean, anything that's renewable, uh, sustainable and digital, that was and still is my everyday bread and butter. Um, I oversee most of the operations within the company when it comes to environmental products, so commercial side, uh, workflow side, biz uh, business development, uh, regulations and uh, pretty much on this end. Uh, whereas Vito Tas, he's coming more more from the IT background, so he's leading the development team with, when it comes to front and back end. Thank you. And we have our first question uh, from Jackie Monster, a very basic one. Um, give us an idea of Andrex. What what is your main product? Yeah, so if if we have to give it like a one-liner that we kind of uh, polarized, uh, like um, polished, sorry, uh, a couple of weeks ago, it's a simple solution for anyone to get exposure to crypto in an environmentally friendly way. Now, what does it actually mean? Uh, it's, a, it's a bridge between two massive industries, which is uh, environmental commodities and crypto. Uh, we help people to calculate their carbon footprints related to their crypto exposure. So that could be uh, what's your uh, carbon footprint of your wallet assets, of your transactions, of your NFTs, of your, the whole, of your whole blockchain. So we help calculate that. And with a simple few steps, we can also offer a range of environmental instruments so you could actually uh, offset your footprint, All right? So it's, it's a one-stop shop. You come in, you say, I wanna be green. Uh, we help you figure out how, what's your footprint, and we also provided a solution that is audit-proof. Now, that's great, and, and you kind of answered my next question, which was kind of how does Andrex intend to make electricity green? That was a question from uh, Trang Fuong Tran, but we have one from, uh, from Zach Sama, who is asking what is the overall roadmap of the project, and what are your plans for the future to differentiate yourself from other uh, green competitors? Yeah, so it's quite a common question. Um, as you know, there's some a couple of projects popping up uh, all, all, on environmental uh, end. So I think Klimadao actually made a big entrance uh, back in summer and autumn. They actually were eating up a lot of carbon offsets within the market. I think another one that's launching soon is Fire Protocol as well. So they, they're building their own layer one solution. Uh, what we are doing here is we're simply providing, as I've said, a one-stop shop, which not only helps you to calculate your footprint in many different aspects, right, but also provides you a various range of choices uh, when you want to choose, you know, whether it's renewable energy certificates for electricity, whether you want to go for carbon offsets, so these are the CO2 credits in third world countries, whether you want to use carbon allowances, so you want to make an impact with first world countries, 
So uh, our approach is much more broad as compared to other projects that really, really like to specify on one instrument. And then they say, okay, this is, this is, this is the one and this is the best. Uh, we don't take that approach. Uh, we give the users their own choice. And uh, I think one of the coolest aspects how we differentiate is we're building NREX in such a way that our offsetting application would not only be accessible on our platform, but also that could be integrated uh, elsewhere. So to any other business, to a wallet provider, to NFT marketplace, to crypto exchange, meaning that imagine if you're running a crypto business uh, or any regular business actually, but I'm just focusing on the crypto aspect for now, uh, you could integrate NREX that with a, when you click, so for example, you wanna buy a Bitcoin and then you have a checkbox uh, that you wanna buy spot green Bitcoin. You click the checkbox, so you get from the exchange, you actually get your spot Bitcoin. And because and the exchange also sends an API request to NREX to calculate the footprint of that one Bitcoin and also use environmental instrument to also provide you with the offset, right? And uh, I think this is where we have a lot of advantage of being scalable. So not only that people come, can come to us and uh, do it manually on our website, but imagine if we could push through to marketplaces, exchanges, mining facilities, wallet providers, you name it, where the, there's the scalability would be massive. Oh, that's great. And and you touched on, uh, you know, other facilities. One of the questions, actually, I think we have Tez on the line. Tez had a question. Uh, who are the clients of NREX? And, and what is your, so the, kind of two questions. Who are your clients and what is your current revenue model? And what gives, uh, like you, you mentioned about your competitive advantage, but yeah, clients and revenue mm -hmm. model. Yeah, so clients can be pretty much, uh, if we say, if you say very broad, so anyone uh, who wants to be green, but if we specify a bit more as anyone who wishes to have green crypto exposure, right? So we let's start, we can uh, start with the retail, right? Maybe you're just a reg, uh, simple retailer and you want to make sure that your transactions or wallet assets or NFTs that you own are carbon free, right? So it, this, this especially could be interesting to, you know, some celebrities, as you see, they're stepping into the NFT space, but at the same time, they're very, uh, they, they're taking a very strong environmental stance. So they also have to find solutions like that. Uh, miners um, could be potential clients. We are in discussions with a couple of miners, especially those who want to attract Western capital. Uh, they want to make sure that their operations are green. Otherwise, you can see the Western capital doesn't like investing into polluting projects. It's quite a common uh, trend that we've seen for the last uh, decade already. Uh, exchanges, exchange users, uh, also at the same time, the renewable, uh, uh, renewable projects developers, because they get an additional outlet to sell their products. So whether they wanna have uh, exposure also to on, on smaller scale uh, sales, because typically within these markets, everything goes in bulk or wholesale all the time. Uh, the, <clears throat> in the traditional finance, no one gives them the opportunity to cater for smaller clients. So this is as well as a potential target audience. And of course, later on, we're also going to target uh, corporates uh, who are stepping into the crypto space. I mean, I, I always keep mentioning this textbook example of Elon Musk. Uh, which would be a, a, a massive achievement if we would manage to onboard them. But uh, a, a lot of people listening probably remember that approximately a year ago, Tesla acquired uh, 40,000 Bitcoins, if I'm not mistaken, on their balance sheet. And at the same time, they were talking about integrating Bitcoin as a form of payment. And it didn't take long for Elon Musk to say, okay, sorry, guys, uh, Tesla is about being environmentally friendly. And <laughs> Uh, Bitcoin transactions at the moment, they're getting a lot of bad reputation. And it's just in general, crypto is getting bad reputation for the carbon footprint and environmental impact. So until they find a solution, how they can make those Bitcoin payments environmentally friendly, they're going to halt that decision. They didn't say they are canceling it. They're just saying they're looking for a solution. So of course, in the future, we're also looking at a second step of our go-to-market strategy is to tackle all of these traditional companies who already know what ESG is, that have very strong environmental practices, and they all also want to get on the crypto bandwagon. But they're afraid to do so because, well, it could hurt their ESG standards, which are already high. Uh, so I, I, I hope I answered the question. 
No, I, I think you did, and we have a couple of more people joined. Actually, some of their questions. Sorry, Jackie Monster and uh, Trang Fung, we already asked uh, your question. We started with those ones, actually. But there is another one. I'm just looking at the people who are here who actually spend the time to come here, so I want to ask their questions. And um, LFJML has a question on... Uh, a bit more generic on how do you want to be effective in protecting the environment? Can you tell us about your future actions to protect the environment? Yeah, so the way we are protecting the environment, uh, what we're doing is we're increasing the flow and easiness to access to environmental markets, right? So there's various environmental instruments in that. So as you mentioned, there's renewable energy certificates and there's carbon offsets, carbon allowances, green gas, uh, the more demand we can onboard, right, uh, the more less reliant on the governments all of these environmental projects become, right? We're, um, how do you call it? You're empowering the environmental markets by giving this extra channel of access for the whole crypto industry. You're increasing the demand that is there is already willing, um, and you're also helping the supply to grow. And of course, the more projects pop up, in the world, the, be the better the demand, the more projects are, the better profitability for them. It's, it's a no-brainer that you'll see that the goals to achieve carbon neutrality by 2050 become easier. Thank you. We, I think we covered some of the basic quite, uh, quite well. I would like to jump into some of the token and marketing-related questions, if, if that's mm -hmm. okay. So uh, our first question in that topic, sorry, to let me just quickly find... Uh, there, there is one question from Ngo, Ngolo, Kala, sorry, Ngolo Kante 1123, who is here, uh, about well, two questions. One of them is, why, why did you choose Solana as a platform? And the mm -hmm. other question is, which DeFi asked as well, will there be a staking mechanism and how, how will that work for the token? <clears throat> All right. So uh, the question regarding Solana. Uh, we were looking a lot of the layer one solutions. So, uh, and throughout the beginning of 2021, beginning and middle of 2021, and we noticed that um, Solana was one of the layer ones that are, were growing quite fast with a lot of support. Uh, the channels are quite active. There's also uh, their vision towards uh, environment is quite aligned with ours. So that whole Solana foundation and also the FDX Foundation, which is which are big Solana backers as well, uh, they also are one of the first ones in the crypto space who are taking the green initiatives openly. So uh, on one hand, it's uh, it's the vision uh, how they see the future, especially within the crypto and environmental footprint. Uh, another one is we wanted to make sure that the layer we're using is um, has fast and cheap transactions. Because one of, one of the things that we want to do with NREX is not only cater for big businesses or big orders for the offsetting, but also for everyday Joe who might say, okay, look, I also want to use offset for my own small transactions or my uh, holdings. On also in the future, we'll be integrating not only crypto, but uh, like how we call it, real world integrations. We have partners, uh, which is the massive uh, OTC trading house, uh, global OTC trading house, SCB Group, who will provide a methodology for calculating carbon footprint of your car emissions, plane ticket emissions, even web hosting services, and on top of that, which is kind of cool, it's like a, how, the average emissions of household pets. Uh, so we wanted to make sure that even the lowest size uh, requests could be fulfilled, right? So for that, you need to make sure that transactions are cheap. Now imagine if you're running on something like Ethereum and you have gas fees. I think now it's a bit better, uh, but throughout the whole 2021, the gas fees were insane. So if your invoice size for offsetting is a couple of bucks and then you pay tenfold only for the gas fees, that just simply doesn't make sense. It's not scalable. No, com completely agree. Uh, sorry, just regarding the Andrex token, there, there was another question, I think, Scar mm, Scar 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 Yeah, and Scarlett does that as well, just I wanted to call out. So very popular question. Uh, yeah, the staking will be ready from day one. Uh, so let me just pull up the figures. I actually got them already today. Um, just give me a moment. And there will be three staking uh, options. So we can either stake for 30 days, 60 days, or 90 days with different uh, AP, uh, APYs. So 40%, 60%, 80%. So it will be already readily available from day one. That's great to hear. 
uh, another question, and we have as well, sorry, CZ or CZ, uh, asking about your marketing strategies and how do you plan implementing a global adoption and especially how do you get intent, uh, getting, how do you intend to get more users, communities and investments from all parts of the world, including non-English speakers? Yeah. So uh, we carefully chose our strategy in the beginning when we wanted to make sure we get more exposure, more global exposure. And uh, part of our investor networks are from countries. And I'm sorry if I will forget to mention some of them because it's difficult to keep track of it. Uh, but so far, <clears throat> we have exposure in South Korea, Indonesia, Malaysia, India, Australia, uh, Turkey, South Africa, uh, Western part of Africa, Spain, Italy, Belgium, Netherlands, Russia, Turkey, uh, Saudi Arabia, uh, Arab Emirates, Canada, Scandinavia. I mean, I guess. Sorry if I forgot some of them. And we're also looking to expand to Japan and China as well. So we already have uh, Philippines. Oh, oh, God, how could I forget Philippines? We have a lo local community there. Uh, so, yeah, we already have, you know, some sort of exposure to all of these countries. And, uh, of course, as time passes, we're also expanding with the local communities. So I think um, I've noticed people were asking Discord and Telegram a couple of days. Okay, why is there only Russian and Filipino community? As we see more people coming into our uh, community channels we will also add more groups as well just just based on the demand so the in strategic investor network was chosen more or less globally right uh, as it comes for environmental instruments we will also be offering in the beginning we'll be offering three regions so it's eu uh, north america and china and then based on our user base based on the requests of the community we'll be going more directly and adding more countries, whether, you know, we should add Russia first or whether we should add India first or whether we should add Latin America. So we will be really trying to feel the pulse of the market when it comes to offering environmental instruments from different places of the world. Uh, very funny. You actually touched on the next question, uh, which uh, MEQT asked about specifically for on the Russian and the Philippine uh, community that that's what <laughs> we have at the moment. Uh, yeah. How, however, I hope, hope it's okay with MEQT. I will ask one of his other questions, which was around Telegram, uh, which was very different, but it, it was about concern uh, recently that the telegram, your Telegram channel has been pretty much flooded with, you know, scam. I think people try to impersonate oh, you yeah. at the bots. Yeah. What are your plans to try to, uh, try to get rid of that? Yeah, so uh, of course we have the community managers. I'm all, I'm also myself online twenty four seven. We have the bots in on the Telegram as well. I think the first time where we noticed that people started impersonating us and creating fake groups, fake whitelists, it happened around November. And ever since then, it's just nonstop. Uh, and it, it is frustrating, especially because we keep on informing our uh, community that, okay, if someone adds you to a random group, most likely it's a scam. These are the official channels uh, that you should follow. So all the mediums that we provide, you know, like Facebook, Instagram, Telegram, Discord, but some people still fall for it. And it's, it's, it is quite, you know, um, frustrating. But we're doing everything we can. So we're reporting. We're reporting those channels. We're reporting those users. We in instantly kick and ban people coming to the channel trying to post some scams or fake whitelists. But it's it's limited amount how much we can do. But we have community managers and uh, specialized bots for that. Thanks for the answer. Now I wanted to. We will have a few more questions around marketing, but I wanted to get into the content because I think that's. Uh, we have some really good quality content questions. So I know I've sent you an image before, but uh, so a question from AUI Labs, who's, who is actually here as well. So he understands that there is a lot of different countries have these renewable energy certificates, RECs, mm -hmm. and some use EACs to try to, uh, try and operate cross-border, but each country and region has slightly different attributes contained within their yeah. ACs or RECs. So they are not exactly <coughs> apple to apple comparison. And indeed, one region's EAC would not meet the requirements of another region to qualify as an instrument of offsetting emissions. How do you intend to handle this kind of situation? 
Yeah, so it's very important. So, so that's a very good question. And it appears that uh, this guy is coming a little bit from at least environmental background, or at least he understands the environmental commodities a little bit. Um, the thing is, is that <clears throat> you have different regions and uh, different standards for it, right? So if we're looking into European Union, uh, you can use European Union Renewable Energy Certificates interchangeably. Uh, what does that mean? Uh, it's a system under the Association of Issuing Bodies, where if you are from Sweden, you can use Renewable Energy Certificates from Germany. If you are from Spain, you can use the Italian ones. Uh, if you are from uh, France, you can use the ones from Lithuania, uh, because it's the way the system is made, it's a synchronized system. So in the very beginning, to make it simplified, we will have the EU certificate, right? And then of course, we can go more granular depending that maybe if we're, uh, we see that we have a massive inflow of Germans or German companies that are using our application, then of course, we, we can have EU and specialized German. Or later on, we see a lot of uh, people coming in from uh, Poland and we'll include Polish ones. Really depends. Uh, uh, another region that also has uh, synchronization is North America. So in particular, you have uh, US and Canada, where they use certificates interchangeably. Uh, so also, as I said, we'll first be using that as a chunk region, and then we'll see how granular we can get. Uh, another place and big energy consumer, especially when it comes to crypto markets, is China. And then we'll be adding regions depending on the demand and the pulse of the market. So uh, for European certificates, we'll be using guarantees of origin. So the audit proof uh, system that is being used for it will be close to 15, 20 years. Uh, within the US, we'll be using MREX. And for other uh, countries, we'll be using IREX standard. So IREX standard oversees the issuance in different regions. So Russia, uh, Middle East, Latin America, Africa. Uh, and we will see how we expand into those regions. Thank you for the uh, answer. There is another question from AUI. There's actually two more uh, that I wanted to ask. Is one, one of them is that these RA, uh, RECs can be retired um, used by their owner and cannot be bought or sold after retirement. Uh, do you have a solution for this? And, and how do you uh, intend to handle the retirement of uh, RECs? Mm -hmm. So that is absolutely correct. So <clears throat> usually uh, whenever we speak of most environmental instruments, uh, you can transfer or retire them, right? Or uh, the synonym for retiring, uh, if some people will be reading online, sometimes you'll see other words used, such as redeem, um, cancel, uh, consume. It pretty much means the same thing. You, you just use it, right? Or imagine it's like you burn it and you receive a certif another certificate that's non-changeable anymore. Uh, in the beginning, uh, when we're uh, starting with our offsetting application, the whole purpose is to green your operations, right? So green your assets, transactions, and these, you name it. So we will automatically, you will purchase and it will be immediately canceled for you, right? Or retired. So that way means that it will be consumed for that particular purpose that you will mention on the application, right? Uh, so in this case, you won't be able to transfer to anyone else because the document will already have all the information what it was used for. Uh, later in the future, we're also going to build an environmental exchange where that will be a bit different and you will be also able to uh, buy and sell and speculate in these environmental instruments. Uh, how are we planning to solve the retirement? So that is the back end from NREX API to the registries API. Thank you. Uh, it's funny enough, I get a question in the meantime. Uh, can we dox you if you are really the Julius? But obviously, uh, while, while I know that you're not <laughs> Julius, I think a fake Julius wouldn't be able to answer these questions. Um, I mean, uh, sure, like, uh, how do you want to dox? Uh, we're fully doxed. The team is fully doxed on LinkedIn. Uh, we got some uh, questions why is it not on the website, but already as we're participating in the AMAs and LinkedIn is reachable and our faces and names are uh, out there. It, it is also was a bit upsetting to see that they're using our likeness and pictures and names in the scams as well. So that was quite, ups quite upsetting as well. But if, if you want to find the whole NREX team, you can find it on LinkedIn. 
Uh, it's uh, no one's hiding under fake names or something like that. No, is that that was just a side question? I know, I know your LinkedIn. Uh, I can check your LinkedIn. Seventeen people, and yeah, it's uh, it's, it's not not a small team. Uh, sorry, back to the content question. Uh, I have one more from AUI Labs, um, which is uh, about some RECs use government systems and allow self-reporting of data to create the REC. Now, this is largely based on an honor system as the various gov government departments may not audit the providers, like North Carolina Renewable, Renewable Energy Tracking System, as an example. Have you thought about this or indeed any verifications pr verification problems yet? Yeah, so we're not going to use honor systems as, <laughs> as nice as it sounds. We're going to only use systems that are... Um, so if, if we're talking about... Uh, renewable energy certificates. So we're going to be using the systems that are actually measured by the grid operators, right? So how does it typically work in most of the countries? <clears throat> you have a local grid operator, so who's in charge of all the cables, capacity, and flows. And you have meter systems that they actually check how much your electricity plant, so it's a windmill or solar plant, how much they inject renewable energy into the grid. And they do audit, and then they provide them renewable energy certificates, right? This is how it works in most places of the world. We're only going to be used uh, using verified official figures uh, because one thing that we really would like to avoid is start going into offering <laughs> honor system-based environmental instruments because then uh, you never know when you're going to hop on some uh, label or standard that's just questionable, and you don't want to... Um, how do you say it? Uh, um, a teaspoon of tar can ruin uh, a barrel of honey, there's a saying. So we don't want to do that. So we're only going to use for reputable, audited, verifiable tier one sources. That's uh, that's great to know. AUI Labs had all the questions. Now we have just Team uh, team I and FX Metal joined who has the next question. And the next question is, regulation is very important. So several projects mm -hmm. in, in many countries were closed due to a lack of necessary licensing. Uh, how do you deal with this problem? Do you, uh, do you work on project that complies with regulation? H how do you make sure that that happens? Yeah, so it's uh, very important. Um, so different environmental instruments have different regulations around them, right? Most of the regulation is around the issuance of the commodities and instruments, right? Now, what I want to emphasize a lot, we're not issuers of uh, either renewable energy certificates or carbon credits or carbon allowances. NREX is a one-stop shop, so it's more of a secondary marketplace. So it's, it's, it's like a place where you say, okay, I, 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 I need to become green. So we tell you how you can become green and we help you source it. But we don't create the commodity from thin air. We source them from people who are under the regulations and who are audited and who are verified by local governments and stuff like that. Um, so the only one where I could say it could be a bit more tricky, as in our value proposition, we also want to offer carbon allowances. And this is where it gets, the, I would say, the most regulated. Uh, carbon allowances are a bit different from carbon credits. Uh, carbon credits or offsets, uh, these are the projects typically done in third world countries. Uh, the top notch labels are VERA, so Verified Carbon Standard, and Gold Standard, so, so two uh, very well known labels. Uh, that they audit the projects in third world countries and issue carbon credits every year for the carbon savings that they do. Uh, these can be used globally. So there's no regulations or not much regulation going behind them. It's more that they're high tier label that has a very strong reputation. When it comes to renewable energy certificates, each local government or the grid operators oversees that the issuance is on point, that the electricity produces green, and then they get the guarantees of origin or renewable energy certificates, and they get issued, and they can do, it, do whatever they want on secondary markets. Carbon allowances, on the other hand, is a bit more tricky because these are the quotas for how much you can pollute. So within the EU framework, that's a bit more easy, right? So you participate in secondary markets, and you can consume these carbon allowances. Um, the very, I would say, more tricky part will be stepping into American markets with carbon allowances and Chinese ones. So not many places in the world have it. So the European Union has the most sophisticated program for that. Uh, China has joined the emission trading system, their own, in 2021. But as you know, China is a bit more of a closed economy, and it's, uh, they're kind of still in a test phase for now. They, they're, they're investigating how to also integrate it on a cross-border transactions further in the future. 
But as it's still a very early stage there, that, that is the only place or the only instrument that I would say, yeah, it could be a bit more tricky. But when it comes to carbon uh, offsets, renewable energy certificates, and carbon allowances within the EU, it's quite simple and straightforward. No, thanks. You actually covered the next question from team uh, in FX Mellow, which would have been about, you know, how do you, uh, how do you issue? Uh, but obviously you are... Um, we don't. Like, <laughs> yeah, you are not allowed to give CO2 allo uh, allowances. There is a question that just popped in not long ago into the Andrex channel that is, I think it's relevant from Gman24, who is here, is that the compliance market is very political. With EU implementing shields against carbon price shocks, how do you see this impacting NREX? Uh, well, carbon price shocks. We, we've seen the change in prices on carbon allowance markets. I think it was, uh, the big dip was of course the 2020, uh, beginning of 2020 when everything closed down so people couldn't produce as much and their emissions dropped down so they didn't need that much allowances. It was something about 15, 16, 17 euros. Now if I'm not mistaken, we're knocking on the 90 euro uh, door. Um, for within the European Union, they're already trying to find ways of substitutes for carbon allowance. So those who are following a little bit of the regulations, I can give one example. Um, within the European Union, already from almost two years ago, uh, there was a, a new rule saying that if you're consuming green gas or biomethane that we're also planning to implement further in the future, then you can reduce your CO2 emissions from gas consumption, which means you need to use less allowances. Uh, within the European network, they're really welcoming any type of solutions that can actually directly reduce your emissions. So if you're using electricity and if you choose to use green electricity, that's a big plus. Uh, if um, I would say maybe speculative in the future, there could be limitations to enter EU ETS system, but so far anyone can enter that and there's a lot of speculation we see a lot of investment banks also taking hedges there uh, so far it's quite open in other words they're welcoming the demand the the, the 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 green and environmental markets they're trying to find any type of outlets and this is what gives confidence in enrix because of course uh, uh, people within the crypto space whenever the, the topic or discussion starts going towards uh, governments or regulation everyone gets very scared uh, but they keep forgetting that the same governments, uh, what they're trying to do is push as much green consumption as possible, because that also helps them to achieve the, uh, the carbon neutrality goals faster. So for that one, we're actually, we're not running against the wind, uh, but we're having wind blowing on our backs. Uh, it's 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 funny. I don't know if you are if you know how I'm thinking, but as I'm reading through the questions and I'm thinking, okay, what is the next question I'm asking? You somehow get there, and and you get there with this again. So another question from Team uh, in FX Mavo is, uh, what I actually don't understand how it works. So all cap and trade have emission limits calculated by governments mm -hmm. and policymakers, which are compatible with their target of limiting environmental damage. How does your cap and trade system works, and and where do I sell it? I. I didn't understand completely the question, but hopefully you do. Yeah, I, I think, I think um, hmm. let me think. I think the person mistaken that we're going to, again, mistaken that we're going to issue our own stuff here. So how does it typically work within the quota system, right? So uh, every uh, uh, pollution generating unit in a business needs to register themselves, right? It's usually that the ones that combustion engines or big factories uh, who who have quite a big emission factor they register and every year they're getting a certain amount of quotas from the government uh, these quotas the, the amount of quotas that they get uh, year on year basis they're getting less and less and less and less meaning that they will have to innovate they will have to switch to greener fuels or greener technologies um, every year you need to submit your energy consumption energy audit your emissions and then you see okay I got this many quotas from the government. Uh, did I exceed it? Uh, did, did I uh, over pollute or under pollute? If I over pollute it, I can have one or one of the two choices. Either I pay fines that cripples my organization, <laughs> which is never, never a good option, or I go into the market and try to find other entities who under pollute it. And I say, hey, look, uh, I'm a bit of a stretch here. Uh, can I buy your carbon allowances? And then they sell it. And of course, the idea is you want to pollute as little as possible, and then you can also offload it into the market. 
the amount of quotas issued is getting less and less and less and less in the future, meaning that all companies will have to switch up to green technologies. We, uh, the cool thing about NREX also offering carbon allowances is that uh, if you participate in these markets and you also, you might decide to use carbon allowance instead of carbon offset, right? So you're affecting European Union or China when we move to China as well for that, meaning you're reducing the supply. Uh, when you're reducing the supply, the big factories, the big polluters, the guys that are actually responsible for most of the emissions, not, you know, not the people who are buying Starbucks coffee and using a plastic straw. Um, these guys get hurt the most because then they, they, they see that the carbon allowance prices go up and they need to make the choice of innovating and going for the green options earlier, which I think is also important how you want to tackle. Um, there's also sometimes you see debates uh, online uh, some corporates, uh, what they like to do, they, of course, they go for green energy, they go for green gas, what they cannot reduce anymore, or they think it's too difficult, they go and get carbon credits, carbon offsets. Uh, this is quite common, especially uh, a lot of oil companies like to do that, which on the other hand, other corporates are saying, hey, but we don't like this. You're just, you're just getting carbon credits uh, in the markets. They're not necessarily super expensive. And you're claiming that you're carbon neutral, and in reality, you're polluting, but you're neutralizing or upsetting yourself. So there are some companies who do not like the idea of using carbon credits, but they would prefer to just use uh, carbon allowances, saying, hey, uh, we're not going to use carbon credits, which are projects of third world countries. We're going to take carbon allowances from the uh, cap and trade system, and we're going to consume them. That way, we need to make sure that we're reducing the supply. So all of these guys who are polluting all the time, uh, they will have to innovate earlier. Thanks again, uh, Julius. We, we have less than 15 minutes, but there is one uh, still very relevant question here. Uh, I think the last mm -hmm. question from uh, Tim in FX Mellow is, uh, although the carbon trading seems great in theory, it hasn't been easy to put into practice. So even the first international carbon market set up under the UN's 1997 Kyoto Protocol on Climate Control collapsed due to the widespread of corruption and abuse of the system. Will a crypto oh, yeah. carbon market solve this issue and, and how? Yeah, there was the UNFCC uh, program where uh, there were some, how are they called now, emission reduction units and other labels that were um, coming from big factories. And I think this is where some backlash went to Klima and Tukan nowadays. So at least a couple of times I've seen articles that they were using some labels that were kind of questionable for, uh, for projects that might have odd auditing and maybe the figures didn't check out that uh, that that well so one way of course how we're doing this we're only using the tier one labels right we're not uh, we're not gonna go for offering clients hey this is the cheapest possible option maybe it's not the best one but no we're, we're, we're gonna use the high tier labels only the ones that are proper standards properly audited um, high re high reputation uh, no, that there wouldn't be, you know, any potential red flags within them. Uh, so as I've mentioned, VERA and gold standard for carbon credits, uh, carbon allowances, so that comes from EU ETS. So, I mean, if, if you're doubting EU ETS system, that the, then uh, there's no system that you shouldn't doubt then. Um, and of course, for REX, every local government body supervising these uh, certificates. We're not going to go for uh, odd credits uh, that, uh, that are not there. However, uh, what I would like to mention, uh, we are in process of uh, partnering with other blockchain uh, projects who are also uh, working towards the greener future. And they have other options how to also provide environmental instruments. So I can provide an example, and maybe this will be like a, a little advertisement for Kurest. Um, what they're doing, they're buying land and they're planting trees. Uh, buying land and planting trees, then they do full audit. So uh, ISO standard audit to calculate what are the uh, carbon reductions from those forests that they plant. If we see that there's other solutions that have proper ISO standards, we will also be implementing them as additional options. So these guys, for example, they're not VERA, they're not gold standard, but if they actually get uh, ISO audited, we will also include it in our value proposition. So this is more coming from the blockchain space and we'll be also very carefully choosing the partners to see that what they're providing is actually legit. Because 
in the space, I've noticed that there's sometimes you have popping up projects saying that they're saving the environment or they're, they're doing carbon savings. But if you ask for the methodology uh, for the research or for the audits, uh, you don't get it. So, I mean, that, that, that's, that's a massive red flag. That's the type of stuff we avoid. Great to hear. There is one more context-related question, and then I, I will jump back because I got a few more questions regarding the mm -hmm. and economics and marketing uh, topic. But uh, before I do that, the last question uh, in this uh, is from G-Man. Is VCM under uh, Andrex's radar while other protocols are bringing carbon offsets on-chain? Majority of VCM credits are still off-chain. Is this something that you are going to pursue in the future or create a marketplace for it? Uh, yeah, so in the beginning, of course, we're using the off-chain environmental commodities because we want to we wanna actually use the instruments that are audit-proof and legit. So if someone is doing energy audit, so in other words, imagine uh, you're using NREX as a solution and uh, KPMG, PwC, EY, Deloitte, you name it, knocks on your door, and they check the documents and say, okay, all good, right? Uh, in the future, as I've mentioned, we'll also be using on-chain solutions as well. So one of them is, like I've mentioned, uh, crew rest, but these will have to be very strictly uh, audited. So these will have to be very carefully checked, and we will be working a lot with other environmental projects. This is the problem where I think there, again, uh, we're in discussions and we're looking how we can also cooperate with Tucan, uh, but uh, the issue is that what, uh, or where I see potential issue there at the moment is where they have one big kettle of uh, carbon offsets that they bring on chain but it's a lot of random stuff mixed together which is uh, which is something that we do not necessarily like so for us when we're doing on chain solutions will the, the, the transparency will be extremely important and very heavy audits Thank you very much. I will. Uh, we have just barely five minutes. I have two more questions that are not, con uh, but people are here who ask these questions. So uh, one of them is actually from Dev123 and also Senpai kind of asked the same question and that's regarding tokenomics. So it seems that uh, most of the, based on the distribution gra uh, graph, the largest allocation of NREX tokens will be around, you know, private and private and seed. And, and why, can you just, Tell us the reason why did you decide, uh, sorry, decide to put a large amount of token funds in, the, in that round, round rather than in public or later? Yeah, so one of the big reasons uh, why we had to go that direction is in order to have the application running. So, of course, we also need to be prepared in terms of liquidity for environmental instruments. All right. So unlike uh, a lot of other projects in the space, we've been working on this from... I would say last April, May, uh, when NREX started. And uh, the development, uh, we, we, we worked on it and developed the application and the front end and the back end already from uh, early days, not when we finished uh, funding, which is, uh, which is a bit shocking to me that nowadays I see projects coming into place where first they do an, uh, a public sale and then they, <laughs> then they provide a roadmap and then they start working. It's, but I guess it's, it's, it, if the market agrees with it, it's, it's the market's. Uh, voice, right? So in order for us to be able to already have environmental instruments and the treasury with these instruments prepared, we already needed capital early in advance, right? So like, or not necessarily early advance, but much earlier than when we want to launch. Because imagine if we have the biggest chunk of capital raised through public, and we expect to have a fully operational application running shortly after the public round, that is simply impossible. So that was purely from a uh, development side of view, especially liquidity of environmental instruments. Now, thank you. That's perfectly clear. Uh, we had a few more questions, but uh, there, there's one generic one, and uh, Scarlett's question is about what is Andrix's outlook toward environmentalism? And I didn't completely get the question. Uh, Scarlett, if you are, uh, feel free to answer Julius, or Scarlett, if you want to uh, ask more about it, just put up your hand and I can invite you as a speaker. you're not then maybe maybe that's the question well <laughs> well i mean we're we're pro environmentalism of course <laughs> that's uh, uh our our goal is very simple uh, what we want to do is we want to create a gateway for crypto to easily become green uh, one of the very important parts 
And our strategy is also educating the market. A lot of people want to be green um, uh, voluntarily, a lot of people and companies as well, and it's no secret the regulations are also coming into place, especially if you see that you know crypto is becoming serious. Crypto is becoming acknowledged as a proper industry, not just some you know cyber funk uh, underground uh, <laughs> stuff. So if you also want to operate a crypto business and be properly registered and considered as a proper entity, you also have to play by the same rules as any other business. Whether you know it's uh, some sort of a cement factory or power generation unit or whatnot, you also have to play by the same rules. Meaning that you know you also need to give access to these environmental commodities. Uh, we really are open uh, to partner up and work together with other environmental projects. So we're constantly have meetings with other participants in the space. Uh, so the one that I mentioned already was Kurest, um, uh, uh, Moon Jelly, um, Echo Rice. We are in the Green Tech Alliance and a Crypto Climate Accord because this this market is very big. It consumes a lot of energy, and it's quite uneducated when it comes to uh, uh, environmental impact. And it's, I'm not saying that in a condescending way because to be completely honest, a lot of people have no idea how these markets work. Uh, it's if if you're not in the industry, of course, you see. You see the flashy movies and documentaries, and you see, you know, these protests where they say, okay, we need to go 100% renewable. But no one actually knows what's happening behind the closed doors. No one actually knows what regulations are being put into place, what type of projects are being done, how much money is actually being invested every year into these industries, and how much is actually being done. So in order to help people to participate in these markets and take, take their stance on also being green, we'll spend a great... Uh, a uh, great amount of time and also educating them. This is also why I think it's very important to play nicely with other environmental uh, crypto projects because we want to we want to join our forces when we're helping to onboard this massive market into being sustainable. Thank you. Now I understand you have about one minute left. So if it's... yes, uh, running r running short. <laughs> Running very short. Uh, is, does anyone have a quick question who wants to put up your hand uh, and comfortable to ask your question if you hasn't been asked? I cannot see any. So uh, my question is then for I know the best question receives a hundred US dollar. I'm not sure if you can pick one now or uh, from the list of questions you want to pick one. Hmm. Well, um, maybe I'll do it later on because now it's a little bit on the spot. So it's no also worries. difficult to remember every single question that I answered. Um, one thing that I would like to uh, emphasize a little bit uh, for all the participants here in the AMA, um, is, is, is there a chat option in this or not really? Uh, because what we like to do is we like to post our official links. So to make sure that if you're following NREX, you don't end up in a, on a dodgy Telegram or a weird Discord where, again, people are promising some no, uh, white lists and then you end up uh, with... And of course, if you can take uh, the time of your day to go and vote for us in the Solana ecosystem webpage, that would be amazing. It's solana.com slash ecosystem. We're trending on today, we're trending on week, and we're trending on monthly, which I'm very proud of. And uh, that would be greatly appreciated. No worries, and I just uh, put, uh, if, if you have these links, just please put them into the Andrex channel. I wanted to mm -hmm. thank everyone, uh, but uh, Julius, thank you very much for answering all these questions. I know you have to go. Uh, please, if you are not on uh, the Andrex Telegram, go there as well, and uh, Julius will send a link here as well in the Andrex channel. Uh, Oh, you've just done it perfect. Thank you very much. Yes, all the links, either global community, Russian, Telegram, news only, Twitter, Discord, Medium, Instagram, Facebook, you name it. No worries. Uh, thank you, everyone, for the questions. Uh, we will get back to who won the 100 US dollar. Julius, thank you very much for your time. Uh, have a great day, everyone, and have a good night. You too. Thanks. Bye. Bye-bye.